Hey guys, what is up and welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel and today we are going to be doing a special video and it's only special because you guys asked for it and I know a lot of people don't watch the channel necessarily but I do want to put out videos that you guys ask for and you guys wanted to see how you can update these to be more modern. So this is basically going to be how to put an SSD in your 2010 or 2011 iMacs and also updating the RAM. Those two things will make these things scream. Nothing really compared to how they are nowadays, but you will definitely be able to get extra life out of them and they will perform to what you would think, you know, what you would want out of this generation Mac. And also you gotta remember, these are pretty old computers at this point. So we can also go into CPU upgrades, which I actually put an i7 in that one and it had an i5. That's a 2011. So I'm um, getting into that a little bit because I know you guys had some questions about those um, uh, upgrading CPUs in them. So the 2011s are definitely a bit easier and you can get more out of it with um, not really easier saying um, uh, installing it and swapping and stuff. Uh, the, 2010s I would say are just worse because of the options you have to upgrade and at the end of the day upgrading the CPUs in the 2010s not really worth it in my opinion you're really only stuck to a, a dual core especially if you don't have a 27 inch a 27 inch iMac if you if you do you can get the higher end i7 in it but if you have a 21 inch like I do then you're gonna be stuck with an i5 and 2011s you actually can um actually i think a 2010 you might be able to get an i7 but a first gen which i i don't know if it's worth it or not i don't quote me on the i7 on the 10 uh 2010 um but i do know you can put an i7 in this one which is a 2011 so you can put a decent i7 in it it's a quad core so it's pretty fast along with 16 gigs of RAM and an SSD. I mean this thing scoots so Putting the whole uh, CPU thing aside because it's not really what this video is about I can make a separate video and I will add pictures actually of my CPU swap in that specific computer Just so you guys can see what uh, Basically had to go through to do it and it took a while and it's not really fun And I do recommend you have some sort of know-how with these machines to even attempt this because this is pretty in-depth uh, task to do for these um, but on the other hand two easy things that you can do is SSD upgrade and RAM and I will be showing you guys that here in a bit so guys on another note the 2010s I remember that I think the 21 inch had a lower wattage power supply so that being said, I think you were capped at an i5 for the 2010 because he had a lower wattage power supply compared to the 27 inch. And then in the 2011s, you had a better power supply that could handle the i7. So from what I remember when I was doing my research on this stuff uh, months ago when I did this, that's from what I remember. So I don't think it's worth upgrading to the uh, any, any 2010 model iMac CPU wise. I think if you're gonna do any kind of upgrades or plan on getting an older iMac, I think 2011 is gonna be your best bet for upgrades. And I know maybe people might ask about models before or after. The only model I had before was a 2006 and I did a hard drive swap in that and RAM and that's about it. Uh, those really aren't worth anything anymore um, besides like nostalgia but um, anything past 2011, I think 2012 might be the same, and then after that, when they started uh, um, becoming slimmer, and they took the, I think the years in 2013, they took the disk drive out, so those years you actually, I believe, have to melt the adhesive around the, the bezel of the screen, and then you can take that off, and then I think you have to take the board out and everything to swap an SSD in it. So I think those are a lot more in depth to what you need to do for just an SSD swap. So um, I've not done one of those yet and maybe I can in the future, but for right now, we're gonna be just focusing on the 10 and 11, swapping hard drive or SSD into them or, you know, swapping RAM. So 
let's get into that now. I just wanted that as a little side note because I just remembered it when I was recording this. So let's get into that. So guys, the first step, as you can see, is taking the glass layer off of the iMac and how you will do that depends on what you have. Um, the right way to do it is using two suction cups and lifting the glass off. Um, there's magnets holding it down, so that works the best. Now, I don't recommend doing what I'm doing 100% because this you can actually crack your glass uh, that crack was there when I got it so that's not for me but this thing has been taking apart so many times I can actually just put my fingers in there and kind of just peel it apart or you can use like a credit card or something or some kind of uh, skinny thick piece of plastic of some sort but as you can see it basically just peels right off like that and then we can get into the screws which it's these are uh, Torx bits so I think they're the TX10s, I believe, for these size. Um, so, mine just has four screws in each corner because I've taken it apart so many times and done different things that I don't really plan on putting all the screws back in for it. So, four for me is good enough. Yours may have less, maybe more, depending on, you know, you get it used or if it's still, you know, you're the original owner of never taking it apart. But, um, they're just all around the corners, none on the top, none on the bottom. Now, you can see the screen just peels away pretty easily, and you have uh, five cables back there, and a few, uh, one ribbon cable that's kind of a pain to get back in, but for the most part, everything is quite simple. So, as you can see, that's what mine looks like inside. As you see, I did the swap already, the SSDs in there, and you might be wondering what that board is, and I will get to that in a second. So that right there actually what i'm pointing at is the power supply and do this at your own risk because that is open and you can electrocute yourself and also fry the computer if you happen to touch that or touch anything against it so do this at your own risk if you don't know what you're doing get someone else that knows what they're doing to do it but let's get into it so there's my SSD as you can see it just uses the regular power and data cables plugged into it. Now that board right there is actually off of the old hard drive because you do need this plugged in still. So you unscrew the four screws on it and keep it plugged in because that controls the fan and that's what, uh, this is the 2010 so this is what makes this big difference compared to the 2011. They're basically the same but enough to you know a little bit of difference in just because of that but not enough for me to take the other one apart and show you guys the difference basically the 2011 you're just gonna need to get an adapter or software to control the fan speed because I believe it's firmware in the hard drives they put in them and you can't use a board like this because there's no plug-in for it or anything so it's a little different but same concept just you're gonna need to spend a little more money in um, installing it so that being said this is actually very easy as you can see it's a short video this doesn't really take a long time if you're moderate with knowledge on this kind of stuff it should only take you maybe 10 to 15 minutes at most um, so we have this all done and then next we are actually gonna go into the uh, RAM but actually right there that shot that is the CPU and I'm like I said before I'm not really going into that in this video but I just want to show you this is a pain to do and if you guys want and I get enough people I will take one apart and kind of show you how a walkthrough of it but if not let's just move on to the RAM for now so the RAM is going to be the easiest thing that you guys have done to a computer. It is a, they're actually uh, Phillips heads, but I used a, a flat head for mine um, that was big enough to fit in it because I didn't really care about this machine too much. But uh, as you can see, it's just three screws and the panel just pops up and there's little tabs underneath as you will see in a second. Um, Sorry, my phone's going off. But as you can see, there's little tabs that you pull out and then you can pull up. You kind of have to pull with force and the RAM sticks will pop up along with it. So this has uh, 
each of these have four uh, dibs in them so mine only has two sticks of ram and i think it has four gigs of ram um my 2011 has uh, 16 gigs but this only has four because i only really use it to control um to control some virtual machines off of my one server but and also for uh, like uh, putty and stuff but so i don't really use anything task heavy so this is basically just do the opposite just for all of this just do the opposite once you take everything apart it's just putting it back together and these are very easy things to do to make these machines a lot faster and even comparable to some nowadays but thank you guys for watching i'm glad i could make this video i will see you in the next one